Good morning, everybody. This is Kim Danke coming to you live from the Shibola Studios in Kennesaw, Georgia. Today is Thursday, November 5th, 2020, and we have 56 days left in the 2020 edition of the Game of Life. And I just heard, you know, I like games, so I equate this to the Game of Life. And I just heard we have an Ackworthopoly and a Kennesawopoly, and I need to get those. I don't know where I can find those, but I need to get them because I have a Monopoly collection. Okay, so yesterday I went to um, a, a, a an event and I ordered a meal and everybody kept saying to me, that looks like you eat really healthy. And I said, I, I do eat healthy, I do. It's, um, it's a good way to be. And there was a man sitting right next to me that has cancer and he's sitting there eating french fries and everything else and I'm thinking hey, man they just don't know they just don't know you know there's so many things that we almost aren't even willing to give ourselves to that would help us with health concerns now I know that this cancer may or may not be caused by that but eating poorly can definitely not help not help so if some of you are dealing with health concerns or have relatives that are dealing with health concerns or friends, please let them know that um, eating does make a difference. Eating, eating well and eating right does make a difference. So I don't know who that was for. I didn't even plan on saying that this morning. Okay, good morning, Kay. Yes, when y'all hop on here, please tell me where you're from and what type of day you are having. Okay, so it looks like, Angie, are you saying that you're having a divine day in Center, Alabama? If so, some of you that may not know what a divine day is, that goes along with what I was just talking about. It is having a perfect Shibboleth day, but eating all organic, clean, non-genetically modified husband. I mean, husband. I read that thing down there for you. <laughs> a non-genetically modified husband. <laughs> Oh, goodness. I get distracted and say things that aren't right. But um, a divine day means that you're eating clean, but you are also eating uh, the, the Shibboleth way. Oh, my goodness. Good morning, Polly. Thank you so much. Thank you, Polly. I appreciate it. Good morning, Kathy. Kathy Preston, New Market, Alabama, having a perfect day. Hey, Michelle, everybody. 56 days to make things better. That's right. She's having an IMF day. She's traveling today and tomorrow and praying that she stays perfect. I know that Michelle will do everything in her power to take what she needs with her, and um, and she can do it. You can do it, Michelle. If you want to do it, you can do it. You can do it. Good morning, Melanie. Thank. Oh, I'm glad you are. I'm glad you are. I'm thankful for it, too. I enjoy it. Um, oh, okay, okay. We're going to pray for Jennifer's, Jennifer Bryant's son, CJ, is having surgery today. Yes, we will pray for him. Yes, we will. Um, hey, Sharon. Doing Jason's self-mastery challenge. Awesome. She's from Hickson, Tennessee. Y'all, Jason's challenges are really, really great. They're only $10 a week, and he gives so much to y'all through that. I mean, the prep that he does ahead of time and then the daily devotions and everything, it's worth it. It's worth it to check one of Jason's challenges out. Um, good morning, Charlene. And good morning, Brenda from Kennesaw, Georgia, having an intermittent fasting day. Welcome, everybody. We're so glad that you are here. So, wow, Sharon is down 3.4 pounds on day four of self-mastery. That is awesome. Hey, Sherry. Hello. Okay, so I was going to tell you all something. I know. I, I think this is, might have been where I was going to go with today. So, I think I put on two pounds that you know how you deal with holiday weight that comes right off after a couple of perfect days. Well, I think I have put on two pounds that really aren't just holiday weight because I have had eight perfect days in a row and, and I'm not down to my, back to my 50. See, 50, I wasn't even planning on losing 50 and I just, the Lord gave me that sweet little gift of 50. I'm at 48 pounds lost right now, and I've had eight perfect days, so I haven't gotten back down to my 50 all after, I mean, I usually have 10 to 12 holidays a month with my maintenance, so so anyway, what I'm telling y'all this for is this, 
this is the type of thing that you analyze and you, you have a look at. So I've had eight perfect days in a row. I still have two pounds on me that I would like to be gone. But what I'm thinking is I, I, I'm not doing exactly what I was doing during a weight loss. You know, I'm having, I'm having all truly perfect days on those other days. But if I really want, if I really, really want those two pounds off, then what I'm gonna have to do is let go of my snack and my extra, okay, that I've been having. Um, I did not have those during weight loss, so I would have to let go of those to cut the calorie deficit. And I might need to put forth a little bit more energy to burn a few extra calories to get me into that calorie deficit. So, so these are the kind of things that you look at over time, especially when you've lived the lifestyle long enough to hit different things. You know, Travis says that he gets on the scale all the time, all different times of the day and all of that. Well, I have never wanted to do that because I just want to weigh in the morning after I've tinkled and right before, uh, I mean, before I've um, even gone downstairs, I don't want to have even drank a little ounce of water because I want to know what it truly is in the morning. And the other day, just out of curiosity, I weighed at night. I'm like, okay, yeah, I see that. But... But with this two pounds hanging around where I was hoping to get back my 50 pound badge, because that's always like my goal now. My, my goal is always to head back down there. Um, is, is It just made me curious as to what has happened. And it's just the fact that I'm giving myself a few extra calories that I didn't do in weight loss. Thankfully, those holiday pounds go right off. But I'm thinking maybe I overeat so much on those holidays that the, cal that the calorie surplus cannot be made up in even eight days of a calorie deficit just doing regular Cibolas. So those are the kind of things you have to look at. And, you know, there are good, better, and best days in regular Cibolas. So um, a, a great, I mean, a good Cibolas perfect day would be three meals, freebies, an extra, and a snack. Well, I really don't do any freebies, but I do three meals, an extra, and a snack in maintenance. And, um, and I do it really just because I can. I don't really need it, you know. It's just I want it, so I do. Well, a better Shibboleth day might be three meals and then just a freebie if I really wanted something, a freebie. Find a freebie that I like. I've just never worked at finding freebies because I felt like if I had a whole bunch of freebies, I might just eat them all the time, and I don't want to do that. So a better Shibboleth day, I mean, the, one of the best Shibboleth days, it's, you know, regular, a regular Shibboleth day is to just have three meals. So if I really want to get those two extra pounds off, I do know what to do. I have to then say, that is what I'm going to do. I could also maybe choose to do a wow challenge or get some exercise in, um, few, get some walking in and burn a few extra calories that I haven't burned. Um, but I'll tell you, this right here is my motivation, okay? This was me. And this is me now. And you know what? Y'all might be thinking, two pounds, two pounds isn't worth worrying over. It is if you don't want to get back up there <laughs> over a course of time. Um, because, you know, we didn't end up overweight overnight. We didn't. So I don't want to end up having two pounds come on and then another two, another two. You know, at some point. I don't think that's going to happen, but I just want to at least talk through it with you. Let's see what y'all are saying this morning. Polly. Polly is having half an oatmeal pie and fat-free fair life milk for breakfast. That sounds delicious. I do love those oatmeal protein pies. Okay, Sharon says, been in maintenance a long time, but got real sloppy with snacks and timing. Yep, the self-mastery challenge has given me the jolt I need to get back on track. Way to go, Sharon. Way to go. And Alice says, good morning from Big Town Staley. We don't even have a stoplight. Oh my goodness. Finished a perfect shark day yesterday and doing a Tiger 16 today. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. Way to go. Good morning, Miss Pat. Um, yes, thank you, Alice. Thank you. Yeah, I just try to, things that come up and, you know, as I'm continuing to live this journey, you know, when they come to my mind, I want to share them with you. And even though you may still be in weight loss, this might be the thing that sticks with you all along. Okay? So, I wanted to read you the devotion, and then I want to read two things from the Bible. So the devotion for today is from 1 Chronicles 16, 29. 
Good morning, Katinka. She's having a great Jason week, too. I love it. That's awesome. That is awesome. He, thank you, Pat. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. Well, see, it's getting cold out, and I can pull these sweaters out. So yesterday I wore a, a silvery sweater with bling on it because I like bling, and now I've got this one on. So thank you. Thank you. So First Chronicles 16, 29 from the New Living Translation, if y'all type that in for me. Give to the Lord the glory he deserves. Bring your offering and come into his presence. Worship the Lord in all his holy splendor. This is such a great verse because when, you know, you can use, I don't know if you've ever heard this acronym before, but pray, P-R-A-Y. When you're praying, you can use P-R-A-Y. P for praise. R for repent, A for ask, and Y for yield, yield, yield to his will. So pray, but this is a great thing to start off with the praise part, okay, the praise part. Lord, may the life I live be a continual sacrifice of praise to you. You, who have done so much for me, ask only that I give my life wholly to you. How can I refuse let what others see in me be cause for them to glorify you too. And that's exciting. That's exciting. So we want to praise the Lord. Let's see. Patty Bass is having a health-wise hot chocolate on this cold morning. Yes, I like to do a perfect pairing with things like maybe the Grab the Gold Bar. Because if you have it with a health-wise hot, the Grab the Gold Bar by itself is a snack. But if you have it with fat-free Fairlife milk or... Um, Kroger Carb Master or Healthwise Hot Chocolate, then it makes it a perfect pairing. Well, those uh, Kroger Carb Master and Fat Free Fair Life are cold. I will do those during the summer, but during the winter, I'll do the Healthwise Hot Chocolate. And sometimes I choose to eat that for breakfast just so I can start off with that warm, nice little drink, Patty, just like you this morning. Good morning, Ron from Lilburn. Thank you, Michelle and Sherry and Alice and Angie and everybody for typing in the verses. Yes, yes, Pat, we like bling. I like I like fun stuff. I like fun stuff. And um, so let me read this to you today. This is two totally different types of things, but this Bible that I have, I just found this. Sherry, we have the same Bible. I just, we have the Jesus-centered Bible. And I, in the back of this Bible, I got really excited because I thought it was a way to read chapters. I like anything I can check off. So I've started checking off. Oh, and I like things where I, I like I like all kinds of like pens and markers and stuff. So I'm going to highlight Psalm 51 because that was a good one yesterday. So this, but but, but it's not the whole Bible. It's um, like 330 something chapters out of the 1100 and something chapters that are in the Bible. But this one is all about faith in Jesus. And, and you know what? I needed this. It was so funny how the Lord knew that I was going to need this. I watched this video. Do y'all ever go down a rabbit, a rabbit trail sometimes watching videos on YouTube or different things? Well, I watch a lot of Christian videos, and I was watching this video the other day, and it terrified me. I mean, it terrified me. It said millions of Christians are going to hell over this. And I watched it, and it was about this man who had had an experience where he died on the um, on in his bed, I guess at night he had a blood clot and he died, and he went to hell. And the description that he gave and the images that they put in there to go along with the description immediately made me start crying. It was so terrifying, and I do not want anybody to go to hell and suffer that when we have the gift. We have the gift, and even though we've committed sins and we've committed terrible sins, then. But we still can accept what the Lord did for us on the cross. We can still accept that. And, and he makes us righteous. Jesus makes us righteous in the sight of God's judgment. So, so that was just terrifying, you know, because then you as a Christian think, oh, my goodness, I, ha I hope I haven't done what it is that um, they're saying millions of Christians have gone to hell over. And so I finished watching the video and I felt like there was no resolution. Now, of course, they prayed the prayer in the end and you hope that when people pray that prayer, it's, uh, the prayer of salvation, that it's, a, that it's a, um, a prayer that they mean in their heart. And, but I still felt like there was no resolution to, well, what, are, what is it? 
But I think what it is, is that people think they can just say the prayer and be done, like they've got a little bit of fire insurance. And uh, that's why the other day I started talking about that we need faith, but we also need to live out that. And so I was asking the Lord for just, you know, confirmation, Lord, that I'm doing the right thing and everything. And I happened to be starting in November, faith in Jesus. So he answered that, and it's been such a blessing to me. Okay, so y'all know I got really excited the other day over um, uh, Psalm 19, which I just happened to find. It wasn't even in here, but Isaiah 6. But anyway, today we're going to read Psalm 51. Psalm 51. And y'all, well, when I read the next one, it's going to be a little bit about our country too. Psalm 51. Psalm 51 goes along with anybody who may not have ever asked for repentance from sins, but it is absolutely amazing. It says, have mercy on me, God. Now, this is a, a Psalm of David after Nathan, the prophet, came to him when he committed adultery with Bathsheba and then had um, her husband killed. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. You know, this, this, that part was important. Wash me clean from my guilt. If there's ever been a sin that you can't forgive yourself for, um, you know, and the guilt is, is there. So wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. For I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. This is why I want my children to know the things that they should be doing now because kids that lead, they, do, they do a lot of things in high school and college and as a young adult that they wish they hadn't done as they get older. So that's one reason that we want to stay and train our children up in the right way. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say and your judgment against me is just. You know, we have to accept that, that, it, that his judgment is just. For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. But you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels and they will return to you. Forgive me for shedding blood, O God, who saves. Then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. Unseal my lips, O Lord, that my mouth may praise you. Please, I mean, well, I don't know why I said that. You do not desire a sacrifice or I would offer one. You do not want a burnt offering. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O God. I thank him for that promise. Look with favor on Zion and help her. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with sacrifices offered in the right spirit, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings, then bulls, again, will be sacrificed on your altar. Now, of course, that's the Old Testament, and Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. This is New Living Translation, Rhonda. So, um, anyway, this is an excellent, ver uh, excellent. So, Psalm 51, y'all. Then, it said for me to read Jude 1. And I actually skipped around a little bit. Well, Jude 1 is all of Jude. So I'm not going to read all of Jude 1, but I am going to read a part right here. Because you may be in a church that the leaders of that church and then the higher ups like of the associations of that church may be false teachers. And I want you to hear this, the danger of false teachers. So Jude, who was possibly a half-brother of Jesus, is warning people about heretical, if I said that right, um, teachers and their dangerous doctrines. The dangers of false teachers. Dear friends, I had been eagerly planning to write to you about the salvation we all share, but now I find that I must write about something else, urging you to defend the faith that God has entrusted once for all time to his holy people. 
And this is where it comes in. I say this because some ungodly people have war wormed their way into your churches saying that God's marvelous grace allows us to live immoral lives. Let's read that again. I say this because some ungodly people have warm, wormed their way into your churches saying that God's marvelous grace allows us to live immoral lives. The condemnation of such people was recorded long ago, for they have denied our only master and Lord Jesus Christ. So you might need to switch churches. I mean, if you feel like your church is one of those churches that has saying, oh, the mercy of God, of Jesus, will allow you to live a moral life, you might need to switch churches. This whole, this country is in trouble. And it is in trouble because we have um, let this kind of thing go on in our churches, in our ecclesia. Ecclesia is a house of prayer. And the church, the body of the, 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 um, the church is the people. And we need to always be in prayer. And we can't let these things slide. We can't let these things slide. And anyway, I want everybody to be praying for our country. And, oh, thank you for that. Thank you for that. And I just, I hope that that has been a blessing to you this morning somehow. Um, <laughs> Angie says the smaller she gets, the more bling she likes. Yeah, Cheryl says that when she has a holiday, it takes her most of the week of IMF to get it off. Yep. Yep. Good morning, Rhonda. Having a turkey trot day. Woohoo! From Center, Alabama. Thank you, Alice. Thank you. Thank you. And you know what's funny is, um, thank y'all for typing this in. And Rhonda, thank you so much for that whole thing. Thank you. Thank you for Jude as well. Oh, I know, Alice. Me too. You're welcome, Melanie. So when I'm reading these things, I go, how? I think this is the teacher thing in me. I have wanted to be a school teacher since I was five years old, and that's what I have a master's degree in, and I've done that. You know, I've done that in the traditional sense. I've been a school teacher. I've been a principal. I'm still a teacher. I am just getting to do it in the way that the Lord is uh, directing me. See, right before I came on here, I sat here for five minutes going, I don't know what to say, Lord, because I, I read those things last night and this morning, and I wanted to share them with you, and then I thought, but is that what you want me to do? You know, I'm okay, I'm going to put that down. You tell me if you want me to or not. So, um, so I uh, just, I, I always think about what I can share with y'all, so thank you for that. Thank you, and the other thing is, the prayer that I had yesterday, and I'm going to take us off in prayer again today. Good morning, Pamela. I'm having a Tiger 16 wow challenge today. Cool. Cool. Yes. Yes, Rhonda. That's right, Cheryl. She, Cheryl says, I'm in maintenance and the lowest I've ever been in a long time, and I don't want to gain anything back. That's right. Yeah, we got to keep that focus. You've got to keep this focus. This is my focus right here. There's my focus. Okay, that's my focus. Oh, thank you, Alice. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Yes, we will. Yes, we will, Rhonda. We're going to pray for Rhonda's daughter, who's having her first interview since graduating college in May. We will. Polly says, thank you, Jesus, for assurance of my salvation. I've done what you told me to do. Works come after. That is correct, Polly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go off in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to come here via technology and just share your word, share your heart, share, um, even though your word is, uh, can be very pointed at times and very direct, it needs to be, Lord. It needs to be direct. So we thank you for that. Father, may our lives be lived as a continual sacrifice of praise to you, Lord. Lord, I lift up to you CJ with his surgery, Jennifer's son. Uh, thank you, Michelle, for going to 
the Lord through us for your friend Jennifer and her son because we can go to the Lord on behalf of our friends. So thank you for doing that. I pray, Father, that the surgery goes well. I pray that he has quick healing and I pray that the surgeons know exactly what to do and that you're guiding their hands and every move during that process. And Father, I ask that you be with Rhonda's daughter tomorrow as she has her interview at 10 a.m. and Lord in Nashville and we just lift her up to you that you are going to give her the right position for her and we ask that the, the education that she's gotten is um, is the right one for this job and that it sh that your, um, your favor is upon her tomorrow. In Jesus' name is for that. But Lord, I want to lift up each and every person who has decided to purchase a Shibboleth membership. Now, I say that because some people purchase a Shibboleth membership, but then they never do anything with it. So, Lord, I want to ask that just them purchasing that membership is like them reaching out and touching the hem of your garment, just knowing that power flows through a ministry that wants to teach people how to eat in a way that will glorify you. And, Father, I just ask that it's just like that, that we're reaching out, we're reaching out for the hem of your garment, knowing that the power will flow through this lifestyle and just the purchase. But I know they got to apply, Lord. So I pray, Father, that they get the right information if somehow the emails aren't getting to them or somehow the they don't understand the, the way that we do this weekly. Lord, I pray that this will come to them sooner rather than later. And I pray for results for all of us, tremendous results and strong self-discipline in a God-honoring way for all of us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Okay, so today I've got to go over to do, a, uh, I'm going to do the West Cobb Business Association, like a little business interview and put that on Facebook this morning for that page. And thank you, Michelle. You're welcome. You're welcome, Michelle. I'm in. And then I've got Ackworth Business Association luncheon today. And then tonight I'm going to go to this thing called the Girlfriends Market over at Marietta Country Club with my friend Liz. By the way, if y'all live near Kennesaw, and you, I mentioned rooms to go yesterday too. If you live near Kennesaw, if you ever need any furniture from there, please ask for Liz. And if she's not in, ask for Angel. Angel's a man, but um, ask for Liz. And if she's not in, ask for Angel. Those are the people that would give you such tremendous and caring service. They all do, but... Uh, I'm telling you to ask for them. So if you do want to buy furniture for Rooms to Go. But so Liz and I have stayed in touch, even though I haven't worked at Rooms to Go in two years. And um, so we still do anything. You know how you make that connection with that friend? So tonight we're going to go to the girlfriend's market and we're going to do that. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Please journal and declare your day this morning as soon as we hop off here. Don't let your day de declare you. <laughs> Don't let your day determine you. You determine your day. And then if you are watching on replay, please type in hashtag Shibboleth for his glory. It makes a huge difference for me to see that. Y'all have a blessed day. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, Angie, you can have it. You can have something. I'm sharing it right now with you. Um, Y'all have a blessed day, and please continue to pray for our country. Bye, everybody.